peace and welcome. Today we have our top 10 circus style themes. As always, we will limit entries to one per franchise. And in addition to a circus, this will also include festivals, amusement parks, casinos, and even carnivals. This top 10 was submitted by Chris Hayes. So in collaboration, here is our top 10 circus and festival themes. Number 10, The Simpsons Arcade, Krusty Land Amusement Park. This Konami arcade game was released in 1991. It didn't see a proper home port to a console until over 20 years later when it was finally released for Xbox Live and PlayStation Network. Composed by Norio Hanzawa, this is perhaps the most underrated theme on our list today. I have never heard anyone bring up the Simpsons arcade game when it comes to the best soundtracks. This track reminds me of the soundtrack to another Konami game, Gradius, or maybe even Parodius. It's a fun little theme on a slept on soundtrack. Number 9, Dark Cloud 2, Palm Brinks. Released worldwide as Dark Chronicle and as Dark Cloud 2 in North America. First coming out in 2001 for the PlayStation 2 console. As of 2016, you can find an emulated version of the game on the PS4 through the PlayStation Network. Composed in its entirety by Tomohito Nishiura, this two-disc, 77-track album was released in Japan on February 19, 2003. I will give the composer some credit. Doing that many themes for a single game is no easy task. A majority of his past work is on the Nintendo 3DS, with a total of 10 Professor Layton games. Before those, he did the music for Dark Cloud 1 and 2. Excellent soundtracks with high quality and equally as good production value. Number 8, Super Mario 64, Merry-Go-Round. From the 1996 Nintendo 64 game that raised the bar for consoles and 3D gaming. Plus, the music was also pretty good. In my opinion, this game has some of the best chiptune of the era, and definitely some of the best on the Nintendo 64. Composed by Koji Kondo, we have a carnival theme with a little bit of a dark feel. The music gives me the feeling that it's trying to be good but it just can't help it and its evil side comes through. It makes me think of a very low budget carnival that's out in the middle of nowhere. It's dirty, run down, and falling apart. Overall, a very good theme. We know we cheated a little bit with this one. There really is no carnival in the game and just this merry-go-round. 
but the theme fits right in with what we had in mind, so we allowed it. Number seven, Time Splitters 2, Circus. First released in 2002 for PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. The second game in the Time Splitters franchise. Who do we have to talk to to get another Time Splitters game? The last one was 16 years ago. I think it's time for a new one. Composed by Graham Norgate, this is probably the most sinister theme on our list today. A lot like the previous entry, this isn't the happiest circus in the world. There is an element of evil. If you attend this circus, it might be the last one you ever attend. The Mario 64 theme makes me think there is a little good left in there, while this theme makes me think almost the exact opposite. It loves being evil, and it finds it fun, almost comical. Number 6, Mega Man 8, Clown Man. This entry to the Mega Man series was first released in late 1996 in Japan and early 1997 in the States. This is the first game in the franchise to appear on the PlayStation 1. The graphics and the music both took a huge leap forward. Composed by Shusaku Uchiyama, a former Capcom composer who contributes mainly to the Mega Man and Resident Evil series. He is best known for composing the music for Mega Man 8. He later returned in a freelance capacity to work on the soundtrack of the Resident Evil 2 remake. When I first heard this theme, it didn't make me think of Mega Man. It's not your typical theme for the franchise, but it works. Five, Final Fantasy VII, Gold Saucer. Coming from the 1997 entry to the series, first released on the PlayStation 1 with a PC port coming out almost a year later. This is the second Final Fantasy game not on a Nintendo machine. Composed by Nobuo Uematsu. I always enjoyed reaching this part in the game. The Gold Saucer is a towering amusement park, and there are quite a few mini games that you can play. I really like how the devs designed this area. They put all these mini games in one location and made it similar to a circus or a casino. I would like to see this implemented into more games. If there's an arcade in game, then let us play the machines. You can also find this tune on the Final Fantasy VII Remake soundtrack. Number 
4. Cuphead. Funfair Fever. First released for the Xbox One in 2017, I remember the first time I saw the graphics. Then, through a good soundtrack on top of those visuals, I was sold. This game here is what made me want an Xbox One. Composed by Christopher Madigan, we have talked about the Cuphead soundtrack before, but there's just something about ragtime in a game that works very well, especially when you consider the 1930s style graphics of the game. The combo works wonderfully, and I give them credit for the idea. I hope more companies take after these devs. Take risks. It doesn't have to be what everyone else is doing, and it still can be successful. Chrono Trigger, Guardia Millennial Fair. First released in Japan on March 11, 1995 for the Super Famicom, and in North America on August 11, 1995 for the Super Nintendo. Take Final Fantasy and Dragon Ball, and you have yourself Chrono Trigger. Composed by Yasunori Mitsuda, one of the two composers on our list today that we have done a top 10 on. He is very talented and makes some really good music. If you are new to his catalog, our top 10 might be a good place to start. This theme reminds me of a renaissance festival. I could see knife throwing, jousting, and the king going for a stroll in his kingdom. It may not be your typical circus theme, but I still enjoy every aspect of it. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Casino Night Zone. Coming from the 1991 Sega Genesis platformer, the first two games in this series have some of my all-time favorite themes. The games are fun, but they are really taken to the next level because of the music. Pretty much every theme is worth a listen. Composed by Masato Nakamura. If he would have done more video game soundtracks, he would easily be one of the best. He is a member of the J-pop band Dreams Come True, which was formed in 1988 and went on to sell over 50 million CDs. I am sure he would be successful no matter what he does, whether it be game music, J-pop, or perhaps music for movies. He is that talented. Before we get to number one, we have some honorable mentions.
1, Streets of Rage 2, Dreamer. First released in 1992 for the Sega Genesis and 1993 for the Sega Mega Drive. A rare instance where a game comes out in North America before coming out in Japan. Composed by Yuzo Koshiro, the second composer on our list today in which we have done a top 10 for. I own the soundtrack to Streets of Rage 1, 2, 3, and 4 on vinyl record, with number 4 being autographed. I also own the first game soundtrack on a cassette tape. Needless to say, he is one of my favorite composers. This theme doesn't have a circus or carnival type feel, and I actually think about a dimly lit club with a bunch of intoxicated people dancing. But either way, I enjoy the theme and it does come from a carnival style stage. Special thanks to Chris Hayes for suggesting and helping me narrow down the themes. Also, thanks to everyone who commented. With all of the submissions, we feel we have a pretty good list. And next we have our top 10 soundtracks of 2020. All games released in 2020 will be eligible, although remasters and remakes will have some restrictions. Last but not least, big shout out to all Gold Level patrons, Bearsona, Quantum X, and Chris Hayes. I am ICC. Thanks for watching. Peace. Thank you.